Hello and welcome to the third season of Nine Months. Did you know 90% of a child's brain development happens by the age of six? This means that between the age of two and six years, the child's brain is forming connections between situations and surroundings. A lot of this development depends on the nutrition the child receives. To discuss this in detail, I would like to welcome Dr. Purnima Prabhu, child nutritionist, and my very dear friend Ishita Arun, who's a model, VJ, actor, entrepreneur also, and now a hot mom. Hi, Ishita. Hi, doctor. Thanks so much for being Hi. on the show. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Okay, Ishita, you have two daughters. One is age four, one is age five. So I'm guessing you probably have a lot of, a lot of uh, great advice to give. I know that when I found out I was expecting, I became a Google MD. I would start looking up <laughs> everything online. How did you educate yourself on child nutrition? Yeah, when I was expecting my first daughter, I just went into it like blind. I'm sure that's the case with many mums. Uh, or maybe not, because I've been meeting many mums who've been very with it, but I wasn't. And I had lots of advice uh, that was, you know, on offer for me from a huge family that I come from and friends. I just kind of assimilated and went with my gut. So my first thing was, of course, uh, the, the very controversial uh, area of mother's milk. That was the first Nutrition 101. I realized very quickly that I wasn't enjoying breastfeeding at all, and it was just making me extremely stressed. Did you find there was too much pressure? I mean, between the laddus that I was offered and the <laughs> herbs, I mean, I was just like, wait. And then I had a pediatrician who's, uh, bless him, he's a great guy, who insisted that, uh, no, no, you must rough it out and do it and stuff. But I thankfully come from a very a half medical family. And so my, my, my cousin, who's a hematologist, she was like, listen, do what makes you happy. All our kids were formula feeders. So I'm, I'm what I, I'm a self-proclaimed, what I call it FFF. I'm a fearless formula feeding mum. You know, I find when you see a kid, you can't tell who's had formula or who hasn't. Yeah, sure. So exactly. the way you're doing it is actually the best way. You know what's best for your child. So, I mean, I just, it, it just freed me up mentally. And uh, that's my, my lesson that I, took forward, I was like, I'm going to go with my gut. So what are your views on this, doctor? What I would say, whether he, had, he or she advised you regarding the express breast milk, which can be stored. So for many mothers, they don't know that the express breast milk can be stored even without fridge for about six to eight hours. Sure. And 18 hours, it can be stored in the fridge. And it can be reused. So that kind of makes the mother more free to do her things. But for six months exclusive breastfeed really has a great advantage in terms not only of a nutritional benefit, this mainly because iron and all which is there in mother's milk is much more bioavailable. The human milk is very easy for the child to digest. There are a lot of immunity boosters in the mother's milk. So as far as possible, we tell people to have till six months and after six months they must introduce solid feeds so that the mother also is freer and it's also good for the child. When you introduce foods and things, at what age did you find your children started having having better nutrition? Around seven months, uh, eight months is when I did. We live in a world where you're going to travel and when you travel you don't want these kids who are having a special meal ordered for them. So they've got to kind of fit in uh, even in terms of palates, right? Do they so, ever say no? Uh, no, not not exactly, because it was it was always Indian. Of course, uh, I swear by Indian khichdi and and all the Indian suji. That's what they had for a very long time. In fact, and now it's come to a point like they can't have suji anymore. <laughs> but I think after the show, I need to take more advice on how to make them eat <laughs> more food. I find that um, we I have twins, and their palates keep changing. They used to love paratha, and then one fine day, one baby said, "Anda." I was like, you want egg? You've never had egg before. And she started eating egg and she wouldn't eat brat anymore. So, But that's natural. I so mean, you can't That's absolutely it. natural to have various tastes. But the yes, trick yeah. to having a child eat a uh, new food is to introduce it by six months. That is because they don't have the refusal act at that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> act or, at all. To answer and your question, yeah. did they refuse so they, it? They didn't you, have a choice. They can't refuse at that time. And you must introduce another thing is before eight months of age, because that's the time they get the refusal. From six months onwards, if you introduce solid foods, it will uh, fill up the gap, whatever is deficient in the milk, breast milk, 
and that's why you have to introduce at six months. So doctor, a lot of the child's brain formation happens between two and six years. What sort of nutrition should we be looking at at that age? At two years, between two to six years, at two years, most of the physical development, at least 20% of the total weight is achieved and height is achieved 20% and 50% height is achieved. That means you can take your height of your child at two years, double of that will be the adult height more or less. And 80% of the brain development is done by two years and rest whatever is done by six years. So for these, the brain nutrients so called are B12, that is the uh, most of them come from the non-vegetarian sources and milk gives a good B12 source. Then vitamin D, then uh, things like calcium also brain development does occur and some of the mi micronutrients are there. You know when we talk about uh, their milestones like walking, talking, all the stuff that they learn, are there certain foods that help them do that? To put it shortly, if you have a variety of foods, okay, you'll get most of the stuff. You don't have to calculate how much milligrams comes from your animal. And if you have a variety of colors, we say a rainbow color diet if you have, mm -hmm. most of the things are then given to the child. So basically the macronutrients, that is protein, fat and carbohydrates, what if the child is hungry, he'll say I am hungry. But vitamins don't tell you that I need to take vitamin A, go and eat orange color food. That is not possible. So mother has to be aware of that most of the colored fruits are given mm -hmm. or colored and then you are mostly done. And you were talking about that milk is also considered, you know, um, a good source. Cow's milk in particular, I remember when I was younger, I didn't like to drink milk and there was always malai floating around on it. My mom would always make us have warm milk. And even if we missed a meal, she said, no, no, drink the milk, obviously for its nutrition. What is the importance of cow's milk for a child? Cow's milk contains a simple protein and cow's milk gives lot of nutrients to a growing child. Apart from protein, carbohydrate and the one which you disliked was the malai which contain omega-3 fatty acids which are also important for the wow. brain. So the solution to that is to have some kind of homogenized milk. Mm. Well, I've been told that homogenized milk is very good because it retains nutritional elements, it contains vitamin A and also it's got simple protein so it's easy to digest. That is true. That is that true. Is very true. Homogenized milk would uh, mix the contents completely so that you can get advantage of all the nutrients, including the omega 3 and the proteins which are necessary for child's growth. And that's what makes it very easy to digest. A lot of mothers, in fact, uh, do recommend homogenized cow's milk by Mother Dairy. From the age of two, what is the calcium requirement for a child? Calcium, about 600 uh, milligram is required. See, about uh, 100 ml of milk would give you about 125 or 127 uh, oh, okay. milligrams. So if you give a glass or two, you'll, you're almost completing the entire calcium requirement. But it is not necessary to complete with the... With only you milk. should be with giving milk, yeah, other things very, like... Uh, yeah. Even the grains contain, soya contains, the nuts contain calcium. So you must be... Use, you should be using all those. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank, Thank you so much, Ishita, for, for all your Thank you valuable insights. <laughs> well, nobody said parenting is easy, but we're here to walk you through the toughest but most rewarding job you will ever have in your life. Just follow your instincts and trust your way. And we'll see you on the next episode.